So everywhere I look, I'm seeing new poly poly hybrids. Casper Rude, Ben Shelton, Lorenzo Massetti, even YouTuber Crucell. Pros are now choosing two different hybrid strings in their rackets to fully fine tune their setup for maximum performance. But like all things in tennis, it's super subjective. It's more about finding what works best for your specific tennis rather than looking for a holy grail unicorn of a string setup. But weirdly, that's actually where it all began. The first generation of poly poly hybrids were extreme spin setups. We had the head gravity hybrid that came up before the head gravity series of rackets. We had true pros, firewire boost, grapple snake, neon dust hybrid, which was actually their second max spin hybrid and wise cannon rock and power. The meta back then about five years ago was super thick sharp mains for maximum ball bite with a softer rounder slippery cross to get that snap back going this meta came from tennis warehouse's definition of a strings spin potential on their string performance database you can actually search for the most spin friendly strings by sorting the list according to spin potential ratio which is a ratio of string on ball friction and string on string friction you want to maximize the string on ball friction while minimizing the string on string friction. Ages ago, like almost two years now, Simon and I did a comparison review of Grapple Snake's Neon Dust Hybrid and Wise Cannon Blue Rock and Power. Around that same time, we also tested Firewire Boost, but never got around to publishing the review. And while these strings do produce just amazing spin, they have two major drawbacks. The first is control. The exaggerated edges of that super sharp main string seem to create a pretty uneven string bed and are prone to extreme launchiness, which which is just detrimental on flat, aggressive shots. It's tremendously hard to control that ball without relying on massive topspin, which at the end of the day is really gonna hurt your shot selection. The second problem with these strings is that they're really prone to notching. In our experience, this was especially bad with Firewire Boost, which due to its triangular main string, always had one corner of that triangle digging into the cross string. This meant that I notched Firewire Boost to the point where snapback almost completely ceased after only about 45 minutes. But before we give up and throw all maximum spin string setups in the garbage, I thought we should test one final setup, the creme de la creme of spin. So if you check the string performance database, the number one string for spin potential is Wise Cannon Ultra Cable. The thing is that's neither the slipperiest string I've ever felt or the sharpest I've ever used. The sharpest string I felt is probably Wear X Sharp with an honorable mention to Grapple Snake Game Changer. And the best snapback I've ever experienced more than something like Toraline Wasabi X, True Pro Ghostwire or Ultra Cable itself has got to be Restring Zero. So to maximize spin as a function of snapback and ball bite, I put Square X Sharp in the mains and Zero in the crosses of Simon's Aero 98 and an FX500 Tour that I've been wanting to revisit lately. Hi, my name is Simon and I am one of the dissatisfied consumers of this product. My name is Beckett One Punch Chungus, and I was born on February 29th, 1998. I actually brought the strings uh, with me. They're the, the Y-Tex Square X Sharp. I was expecting big spin, and the spin was big, but was it that big? Uh, that, was, that was the question we all had on our minds back then. They were sold to me, um, I think due to the sharpness, as being one of the most spin heavy strings when I bought that this uh, product, money can buy. But what I read on the tin to be honest, was that, uh, what I, I found was, really was disappointed. in actuality, what this string did spin. was create an what insanely high launch when I opened it up and it did not create the kind of spin needed. I don't want anything any from the spin. company. Um, it actually, you know, created absolutely no feel just to raise awareness for anyone who's buying these strings, you know, proceed with Proceed with caution because 
Well, it is sharp, but it, it doesn't, it, oh, it, it does grab the ball and it's, it feels like it's going to spin. The squareness of the string, all it did was kind of just launch the ball up and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, it just made me really sad. And you think when it grabs the ball, it's going to, it's going to grab it and bring it back down, but it was grabbing it and just throwing it right out and I don't think it should be allowed to do that to me. The documentarian's calling me an idiot, so I told him to leave while I talked to you. So to remedy this outrageous launchiness, I got to finish up this reel of Tour a Silver 7 Tour, so that's what we went for the main string. And I've tested Restring Zero and Wasabi X back to back with Silver 7 Tour mains, and here's a quick summary of how those two different crosses compare. Spin and durability is so much better with Restring Zero as a cross. The insane snapback of zero means that ball pocketing is great, but the feel isn't quite as connected or plush as what you would get with Wasabi X. To put this in like racket terms, you might say zero feels more like a pure drive and Wasabi X feels more like an Eason 100. Neither are super connected by any means, both are a bit muted, but there's something exaggerated about Restring Zero that leads to this enhanced power and spin at the sacrifice of ball feel and control. Zero is just giving me so much more in terms of durability and notch resistance, even with Silver 7 Tour in the mains. So for my preferences here, I think Zero does win out. But just in time for this, Slinko has released Hyper G Ram. They tell us you can expect more spin been a deeper, more penetrating ball compared to normal Hyper G. But I have to say Hyper G has never really been my cup of tea. The dwell time was just too short for me to ever be really connected to that overall quite plasticky feel. But damn, like Hyper G round as a cross to Silver 7 Tour is absolutely S tier in terms of feel in my Slinka Whiteout. It's definitely not comfortable, it's firm, it's boardy, it's jarring off center, but the connection to the ball on central contact is absolutely insane. It's pure, it's rich with quite a bit of vibration coming through the frame, but you get this tremendous ball feel that's just mouth-watering on court. Yeah, mouth-watering ball feel, I said it. But compared to Wasabi X, the ball pocketing definitely isn't quite as good, and you can see this reflected in the dynamic tension numbers. All right, Wasabi X, dynamic tension test. All right, Hyper G round in the crosses, 54.50, again. 33. 34, stiffer, as I told you. I'm always right. Longevity doesn't seem to be as strong either. I felt like I notched the mains a little faster with HGR, but that could have definitely been because I was swinging faster due to me definitely having more confidence on court. All right, so I've hit with these once now, let them settle for about two days. Let's see where the DT is at. 32, so two points drop in overall string bed stiffness. I think that's not that bad honestly. So let's see where the Wasabi X lands. Pretty similar, but the two points in dynamic tension drop. So these strings almost neck and neck. And the control with HGR is also I think a little better than Wasabi X. And that is again exactly what you'd expect with the dynamic tension that's a little bit higher. So you really have to swing out to get a good penetrating ball. But the downsides are definitely going to be that all around forgiveness. I felt this especially when returning serves, HGR did feel unforgiving. While as Wasabi X remained pretty easy even though I accidentally strung them both too high at 54.50. At the end of the day, I think most players are going to prefer Wasabi X over Hyper G Round. It's softer, more powerful, has better spin, has improved comfort, and just is overall more forgiving. And honestly, I don't think control is sacrificed that much. But man, 
for me, I felt just so much more confident on court with this from that improved feel and control that I think Hyper G is moving up to the number one spot on my all-time personal favorite crosses list for Poly Poly High. And the thing is, that's just my personal favorite. Like for you, I think the story is gonna be quite different. But you know what else is my favorite? Direct Tennis, the sponsor of today's video. Direct Tennis is added again, connecting stringers, professional, experienced, knowledgeable stringers with you, someone who needs their racket strung. If you're sick of getting shafted at the big, I don't know if I can say shafted in the sponsorship role, but whatever. If you're sick of getting shafted at some big box store, you've had bad customer service somewhere else, so you want something, you know, from someone thing a little bit more personal, a little bit more honest, a little bit more connected, you can download Direct Tennis today, checking out the links below, Android, iOS, and they're bringing new features every day to better support and better connect sole proprietor stringers and the tennis community as a whole. Thank you so much, Direct Tennis, for sponsoring today's video. So remember how this whole thing with Poly Poly Hybrids is subjective, right? The hard part is determining what you're looking for in an optimal string setup. We can just look at the pros and see huge variation. Rude has Poly Tour Spin in the mains and Poly Tour Pro in the crosses. Again, Simon and I tried this setup a couple years ago. It's a total board. We couldn't make a video because like we almost couldn't use this setup. He got great spin through great ball bite, but the snapback isn't super easy. And this is going to result in just unreal control for a guy who rips top spin shots as hard as root. And then on the other hand, we have Ben Shelton. He's using poly tour strike in the mains and poly tour pro in the crosses. That round main string is going to give you a more consistent feeling string that is opposed to something super shaped, which is exactly what you need for these big aggressive shots, stick volleys. And that's Ben's game. You can see why he chose that setup. And I don't think you're gonna find that many pros out there looking to maximize spin at all costs. And that's why I'm not trying to maximize spin. Eat. Well, it's not why, I just don't feel like it's good for my game to maximize spin. And yeah, we did get great spin out of those insane setups, but I don't feel better playing with that on court. I just don't feel confident because I don't trust the launch. I, for my game, I want something more durable with great tension maintenance, great notch resistance. I string so many rackets every week. I wanna like do it as little as possible. It takes up time in my week. I want something connected so I can feel what's going on on the string that I need to be able to, you know, hit a bad shot and say, why was that bad so I can fix it for the next time? Cause I hit so many bad shots. I never know why, cause I, 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 just, I suck, you know? And I do want something that gives me a little extra ball bite compared to a pure round string, but not so much where the launch angle gets too high or too unpredictable. So I'm curious, I wanna hear from you. What do you want in your hybrid setup? Are you looking for more spin, more power, more control, more feel, what kind of feel? And how do you prioritize all these things? There's a lot going on when we're talking about like a hundred different strings you could have in the mains and a hundred different strings you could have in the crosses. Like I haven't even tried a hundred and different, well, maybe I have now, but still, that's a lot. And then just for fun, I wanna share with you a couple crosses that I have on my radar for great performance. And that would be Yonex Poly Tour Fire. So wax infused or silicone infused, head hawk, normal head hawk. Diadem Flash. I strung up some Diadem Flash the other day in the navy blue. It was like almost greasy feeling. I'm really interested to see what that would be like. And then Taraline Enzo Pro. Not to mention Restring has a brand new string on the way and I can already tell that's probably gonna be number one on my list because I've already tried it honestly. I really like it, but we'll see how that goes later. I think uh, I think I can say now as of next month, I will have something very interesting for you to hear about that. But I also really need to confirm my ideal mainstream. I've been using Torna Silver 7 Tour as a substitute for Tour Sniper, which I do prefer. I think it's a little more consistent, a little bit softer feeling. Sometimes Silver 7 Tour is a bit stiff, especially in the whiteout. And then I'd, I thought I'd just give you like a top eight main strings just just for this video. I don't know like how firm I am on the order of this top eight. You know, depending on my mood, things are gonna change, but here it is. Grapple Snake Tour Sniper, 
Tour M8, Silver 7 Tour number three, number four, Slinko Confidential number five, Grapple Snake. Grapple Snake just dominating top five here.